Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is the founder and principal of DDC Consulting, and she was the spokesperson for U.S. Senator Daniel Lakaka and former Hawaii Governor Neil Abercrombie. She is Donalyn De La Cruz, and today we are going beyond strategic communications. Hey, Donalyn, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for that great introduction. Now, Donalyn, you and I know each other for many years, and, and we were both born at Wahiawa General Hospital, and our grandmothers were neighbors in Wahiawa. And I want to know a bit about your background growing up, and can you share about what schools you attended as well? Of course. Yes, I am proud to say that I was born and raised in Wahiawa. Not a lot of people can say that. And um how fortunate am I and others to say that, you know, you're born and raised in one place. So with that upbringing, I went to Wahiwa Elementary School um, under the principalship of George Nakasone, um, who was an instrumental part in, I would say, in my leadership and my brother's leadership going forward. Um, intermediate school, Wahiwa Lancers or Wahiwa Intermediate. I think they call it now Wahiwa Middle School. And then, of course, I am a proud Lelihua High School graduate. We are the Mighty Mules. And um, yeah, it's just, it's all Wahiwa based. And I'm very, very proud of that. I went on after that to stay home for a little bit at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Now, you also uh, did some college, uh, some studies in college on the mainland as well. And what, what did you study there? So I did, I attended the University of Maryland at College Park. I was a Terrapin at the time. That's exciting if you're a sports fan because they were like the best basketball team um, when I went. I mean, the Terrapins just rocked under coach Gary. Um, what was his last name, Rusty? Or was that his last name? But the guy was just amazing. And I, as a student, you could watch these games, but it, that's not why I went. I didn't go for sports. I went for journalism. Um, I, at the time, I went for um, on exchange from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and I went to the University of Maryland. And it was an amazing experience. I also studied political science there, speech and debate, and I wrote for the school newspaper. And I also um, was doing broadcast news there for a program called Maryland Update. Now, Donna Lynn, when you reflect back on your real early years, what were some of the first jobs that you had that you got paid money for when you were super young? Okay, first job was eight years old. I um, worked with my aunt as a, I don't know, a model would be the right word, but I, I was the, the local girl that took pictures with all of the tourists that were on one of those dinner cruises. So, you know, they took that photo home and I just smiled and I, I was there for a while. And um, my mom pulled me out because I got ubus. <laughs> she was like, you got it from the boat. So you ain't working there no more. So then, um, cause I had very, very long hair and I never worked there again after that. And um, from there, I was a Sunfresh carrier deliverer. And that was, that was amazing. That taught me a lot of toughness um, you know, growing up in Wahiwa, there's different tracks. And so um, my brother had one track, I had the next track over. That's what they kind of nicknamed it. And this one had do a lot of dogs and a lot of people that um, I had a tough time collecting my quota. Let's just say that. So it taught me about all of that, approaching people and asking them for, you know, for payments. And then um, being chased by dogs at a very young age. Um, I still, I love dogs, but you know, it's just one of those things where toughness all the time. Meanwhile, my brother, oh my gosh, she'd come home with big tips, sometimes like six pack soda and candy. So let's just say he had a very good track and I had a different one. 
That's funny. I can see Donovan, you know, uh, scoring some big tips like that. And I remember the Sun Press back then. And Donalyn, you became a TV news reporter for KHON2 uh, yes. for many years. What What is it about TV news reporting that you enjoyed? Okay, so it, it dates back to when, you know, my desire to be a journalist, right? When I was in high school, I had met and interviewed Leslie Wilcox. And I was 16 years old, Rusty, and I, she became my mentor for, even till today, I would call her a mentor. Um, so that's, that's years in the making. And I ended up interning when I was at the University of Maryland um, at KHON under the supervision of Craig Gima, who was the executive producer. Um, so I got to be with, I think, the greats. Back then, as you know, KHON was king. Um, you, you had the greatest, not just from the anchor of Joe Moore, but, you know, you had Leslie, you had Barbara, you had, not, Barbara Wallace was also there, but Barbara Marshall, you had um, Jim McCoy, you had um, Ray Lovell, you, I mean, just all of these names that I could go down, um, you know, Ron Mizutani was still in sports at the time, um, Howard was there, Bill Brennan, and um, Kirk Matthews, another mentor of mine. So I just, uh, they, they took me in, um, I guess I did well. So I was still a senior when I started my career at KHON. And at that point, I, you know, I started from the bottom, went from intern to um, assignment desk producer, exec, I didn't do executive producing, I went from producer to reporter. And I, I just had a blast, it was, it was amazing and I had, very, very, very good mentors. And then that went on where Mark Matsunaga was an assignment desk editor. So um, we were very, very, it was a strict, I was called the kid. Everybody called me the kid. Like, hey kid, everybody called me kid. Um, but lessons, um, they were amazing journalists, great storytellers. And that's what, that's what I loved about it is telling stories, um, learning about our communities, the diversity in our communities and just really talking about that and educating the public. No, oh, you're so right. I mean, and, and Leslie Wilcox, I had her on my TV show and, oh. and she's absolutely legendary and uh, I'm super impressed with her. And, and Donna Lynn, you just launched, you had a launch party of your new DDC consulting company uh, a few weeks ago. And I was very fortunate to be invited to, to go there and celebrate with you guys. And and what are, tell me about DDC Consulting and, and the goals of your business. Sure. I think after my stint in government, um, you know, I had worked at the Department of Education and I had gone on for um, another consulting firm. People were, were looking for me. And even when I was at, in government, people would often call me for assistance in their communication needs or if they had an issue and they just wasn't sure how to fix it, they'd call me. So eventually I thought, well, people are trying to figure out where I am. So it was, I thought, what am I gonna call this, right? How do I jump in and do this? I just called it DDC Consulting. Obviously it is, uh, it's my initials. Um, and it's really me offering all of those skill sets that from, you know, we're talking way back to what you just mentioned from my journalism skill sets to um, strategic communications to public affairs to community outreach and engagement and crisis communication. So it's all of that kind of wrapped in one. In fact, I just came from a client meeting and we were talking about some options on how to how to just kind of create some messaging that um, can reach a larger audience and trying to find out what the objective is and all of that. And that's something that I always ask people, well, well, what do you think, you know, what's your end goal? What do you, what does success look like for you? And then we try to try to figure that out. And sometimes they're not really sure, right? They're not sure. So it's helping them navigate through all of that. So I know that it's not your, your um, I would say your bumper sticker type of answer because I don't do bumper sticker stuff. I, I do kind of a lot. Yeah, you definitely don't do bumper sticker stuff. And, and Donalyn, I have no doubt that your business will be super successful. I mean, you're, you're very genuine, very smart. You have lots of positive energy and a lot of experience. Um, I look at you as a communications expert. And what are, what are some keys you feel to really having effective communication? Listening is very important. I know when people think, oh, communication, you know, the first thing you think about is, well, what do I have to say? 
um, take a step back and what is it that you're listening to and what is it that you're hearing? Um, I recently was at an art show, I think it was the Van Gogh, and he said, I'd like to walk with you to see how you see things. When I read that quote, it's the same thing, right? How, are, how am I perceiving what your issue is? And so it's listening to somebody and then making sure that you're, what you heard um, and what you think is the issue is really that. That's the first thing. Um, and that's a big one, Rusty. A lot of people want to jump in, you know, when, when they're listening to someone. Oh, I know, I know. No, um, I would say um, that's, that's so key, listening before you, you speak um, and giving deep thought to what they're saying. So that's part of a essential communication tool. Um, and then of course, depending on the audience and what you're doing, right? There's public speaking type of communication. Um, there's communication skills in relationships, in business, all of that. And none of it's just um, you know, the same. It really comes down to who's your audience and then how is it that you're gonna communicate? What do you wanna say and ultimately why? Well, that's why I look at you as a master communicator, and and I like hearing those insights from you, Donald. And, and your brother Donovan and I are have been good friends for so many years. And um, I want to know, Donald, in your perspective about Donovan, in what, why, why is he successful? I'm going to um, go back to your your book in terms of the four p's and i and there's many reasons but i think you sum it up right and no matter who it is whether it's my brother me um, maybe even you clearly because you you wrote this but those four p's you know the people purpose process and that equals performance what's key in those four p's is the purpose right what you do like what's your purpose behind um, all of that. The people are there and, and you, it's never alone. It's who you bring along, it's who you're serving, why you're serving, all of those things. Um, that's really important. And I believe that Donovan's successful is because he knows the people that he wants to um, help. Um, the, he, he understands with great intent, the people that helped him get there to where he is today. Um, and again, the purpose, you know, why, are, why do we do what we do? What's the, and what's the purpose? So I'll tell you a story. I mentioned earlier about Wahiwa Elementary and George Nakasone and why is he so important? Principal Nakasone um, would take my brother, he would grab a, a bunch of guys after school. And if you're, if you're from Wahiwa, you know, back in the day, if you left Wahiwa Elementary, everyone walked home. It was a lot of walking on, on Glen Avenue um, that turned into Kilani Avenue. And so there was always like the, um, the candy truck, the guy who would sell. So people, kids would buy, right? They'd buy candy and all of that. So Principal Nakasone would take this group of boys and they'd walk the entire way from the school and the perimeter of where other kids had been walking home and they would pick up trash. So they'd pick up all of the, the trash that was left behind um, from, you know, kids trekking home after eating candy and, and all that. And um, the goal was he, he instilled in my brother that you take care of your community. You do these things because you take care. Just because you didn't drop that trash, that piece of rubbish, doesn't mean you, you don't pick it up. If it's there, you pick it up. I like hearing that story. And, and no, that really makes a lot of sense because... Yeah. You know, for Donovan, I mean, he really, really cares deeply about all of the people he represents in the Wahiwa Mililani area. And yes. and I want to also ask you, Donalyn, you spent, uh, you know, a lot of time with um, being the spokesperson for U.S. Senator Daniel Akaka. Mm -hmm. What made him such a great leader? You know, it's been said many, many times about that. Um, Senator Kaka lives aloha. And it's easy to say, but it is hard. It is hard to do. If you were ever in his presence, and I'm sure you were, you just felt it. You, um, you stood up a little taller in the sense of you knew you were in the presence of somebody who um, carried himself in a way, not because of he was a U.S. Senator. It's because he had this spirit and sense of aloha that you always treated people with respect. Everything was done with that sense of aloha. And if you worked for him, 
you needed to represent the senator with that same style of aloha, no matter where, um, whether it was in Washington, D.C., or if we were home on the Big Island or anywhere else, you always carried yourself with that sense of aloha. You were never too big for anyone or anything. Um, and he was amazing, uh, that sense of aloha, but don't let that fool you. And I think a lot of people were fooled, right? Um, his kindness was often mistaken for weakness. And um, he had that strength, but it was through aloha. He never had to shout. He never had to do things like that to showcase um, how to get a point through. He did it through aloha. And it's very, very rare today. And I was fortunate to be in Washington, D.C. when he could do that. And he truly represented what Hawaii was about and um, what it meant to be, what it means to be Hawaiian. Oh, no, we're all so proud of uh, Senator Akaka. And you're right, he, he is uh, Mr. Aloha and represented Hawaii really, yeah. really well. And it's Donald, I want to I wanna <laughs> ask you about um, Governor Neil Abercrombie. You were the spokesperson for him as well. And what are some things that you admired about Governor Neil? So I laugh because you couldn't get more opposite, right? I mean, Neil was in your face, uh, the governor, and that's what I loved about him. You, you, there was no question about what, what his purpose was, what he was passionate about. You knew, he let you know. Um, and sometimes that was misunderstood um, because he saw, you know, like I, for example, he wanted, um, and he still believes in early education. And there was that time when, um, I, I just remember this working for him where the headline for the newspaper that day was about how much was going to the Pro Bowl. At the time, we're looking for money to educate kids um, at the earliest age of two to three years old to start their education. We could not find funds. So of course the governor is upset seeing that these Pro Bowlers who make a good income were already getting more ed. And so I just knew that it was gonna be on his mind. and. He mentioned that during a news conference. And of course that was the headline, but people didn't hear what he was saying. He was trying to say that as much as we make football priority, educating our kids should also be a priority. And so that passion that he has is what, um, what I just loved about him. He's also pretty brilliant. brilliant. He has great taste in music. Um, I, whenever I'd come into his office, we, we'd kind of, share music together um both had a strong affinity towards earth wind and fire and so it was it was always fun um and he just he's just a, a wealth of knowledge you know from philosophy to because i as you know he was an educator as well same with senator akaka i worked for both former educators then politicians so um both of them had so much knowledge to share and i am blessed to have worked for both of them well, Donald and everybody loves uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, and if you don't, then, you know, I remember when they were in town, Rusty, and I just so happened to be in the role where Vicky Cayetano and Ben Cayetano were. And then Gov Ben looks at me, he goes, what you doing over here? What you know about this music? And I said, are you kidding me? Like, this is good music, you know? Come on. Like, just because it's from your time doesn't mean that I can't enjoy good music, so... Thank you for saying that, Rusty. That's right. Everybody loves Earth, Wind, and Fire. Well, they're timeless, and you know we appreciate great music. And um, yeah. Donlin, I want to ask you about uh, Robert Kikaula. I mean, he we had he recently passed, and um, he's someone that that was in front of the camera. He was behind the camera. He did it all. What What are some things about Robert that you liked? Um, because you, you were in front of the camera and behind the camera as well. That sense of humor, um, you know, he always, he, he, the guy is just super smart, right? Knowledgeable about everything. So it wasn't just a flippant type of conversation that you would have with him. Um, clearly he's recognized, I, I love going to UH games and um, seeing him there and seeing him in his element of being that sportscaster. I think he's, you know, one of the best. And you speak to anyone. I know Kanoa Lehi now is going to be, you know, the commentator and pays the same respect um, 
with regard to that knowledge of the game and how to relay it in a broadcast way. It's, it's, it's a skill. Um, so that's one part, but from the television aspect, it's just all around good guy, you know, making people comfortable in the room. I didn't work with him in the, in the same station. So I couldn't tell you all of everything, but I know when I was there, there was that Kate Hollow presence, you know, and Robert's there and it's always just a good feeling. And he would joke, <laughs> he joked with me once because, um, so Paula, I know Paula too. They were, there was one when they were still anchoring together. And Paula had this gorgeous um, blouse on. So I texted her and I was like, oh my God, Paula, I love that blouse. It's because we're friends, right? So I just, I love that. I, you're looking fabulous, Paula. Love that blouse. And then Robert texted me back and said, well, what about mine? <laughs> so, you know, like, you, it's just, just good fun. Just, um, yeah, just when, you know, you, I'm just really fortunate to know good people like that. And um he wasn't too big either to make that kind of comment and joke with me either. So, but he knew a lot of stuff about a lot of people. And when I would hear um, that he was the one to give the pep talk to the um, football players before a game, I always felt pretty good because I'm thinking, man, they must have heard some knowledge today. You know, this is going to be a good game. So, yeah. No, oh, yeah, he'll he'll definitely be missed and. And, you know, that's why it's so important. We need to appreciate the people that, that are here and not really take anybody for granted. And Donald, I want to ask you about my, a little bit more about my book. So you mentioned about the four Ps earlier. Um, and, you know, I talk a lot about uh, character and, and you're a woman of great character and, and leadership, obviously. So what, what do you, what's another thing that, that stood out to you in the books? Even though, you know, my, you might say I'm accomplished and all of that, the thing that sticks out to me is the discipline. We all have a hard time, right, sometimes to be as disciplined. So anytime I can take nuggets like that, even from your book, it's a reminder. Um, you know, I'm someone who's pretty harsh on myself, right, because performance um, and doing well is extremely important to me, right? Um, it is that, it's part of my character. I, I want to do the very best that I can do. And that also stems back from, I'll tell you a story of when I was a news reporter and Barbara Marshall was the executive producer. And you know, there were days where, um, you know, you're just writing these stories and she'd call me up and you, I would turn in the story to her. And then I hear her, kiddo, get over here. I go over there and she's like, what is this? And I'm like, what? She goes, read your lead. And the, for those of you who don't know, the lead is basically your first, the first part of the story. And I read it. She looked at me and she goes, you know, you can do better than that. And I said, I can. And she, she goes, take it back. And she goes, don't you ever, you know, send me anything that is not your best. That's a lesson, you know, I mean, right. You think every day you're writing, you can be a little, ah, I'll just turn this in. Um, that stayed with me. So it's that, that discipline to always do your best, no matter how tired you are, which can be hard. Um, so that stuck with me, that discipline um, equals great performance. I love that you brought that up because discipline is such a necessary part of success. And mm -hmm. I also talk about how risk promotes growth. And what are, what's an example of you taking a risk uh, in the past so far? You know, there's a lot of things that, um, whether it's personal or professional, um, I don't, a lot of people don't know this and I'll share it with you because it, since it's beyond the lines and people probably have me in some box, there was a point where I was called um, from a director at uh, um, Broadway and it was for the show Stomp. And they had a slot for me because I had been recommended to them. And for those people who don't know, I had done acting early on and when I was a reporter right before that I was doing acting and then all my actor friends I guess somebody it dropped the line you gotta call her so then I'm thinking oh my gosh I had to fly to New York because they don't just say oh we have they're like show up this time here's your audition time blah 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 you get there so I go to the Orpheum Theater and off Broadway and there's a, it's a cattle call but there's a side door and there's like about a dozen of us so I was part of that select group that was called so they could see and then they throw you in with other people that was a risk you know like one I hadn't been performing in forever and um, I hadn't been dancing certainly in a long time 
And I go there and Rusty, people have their like legs above their head. And I'm like, oh my God. And I, I was just excited to be there and still being that reporter me. I want to know where everybody's from and what they're doing, but they're very focused and serious. They had, you know, headphones in. And so I thought, okay, I better buckle down. Um, but I made it through. Um, actually, I got called back twice. And um, so what that means is you get called back, called back, called back, and then that's it no more. And it was really cool because I went there to just give it all I had and I made it. And then the last thing they said was, okay, we're going to send you guys home and um, you'll get a call. And it, from there, it's just whether or not they can place you in um, a company, right? So either in whatever state or New York or overseas. And um, I did get a call and the call was that they could not place me, but they wanted me to audition again the next round. That was heartbreaking to hear when, but I look back and I think, hey, I mean, I made it all the way. Like there were people who didn't get called back and right there, they're breaking down in front of me because they're like, I've been trying for five years. What is it that I'm not doing right? And here I am coming out of news. No one knows like I'm this television reporter. I don't dance, I don't do anything. And I made it, you know, but I didn't um, get the part. But that was a risk for me to just go for it and take it and, and go to New York. Another risk was that people don't know is I went, I moved to Spain. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't speak the language, um, but I did it. And um, I was conversational after five months, but then home kept calling. So I came back here and I didn't have friends who spoke Spanish in Hawaii. So I no longer um, speak it, but that, I mean, I think back, Rusty, I don't know. And then not only that, but I was on buses. I would just go holo holo all over the place. I would never do those things now. I think, oh my God, I was like the only girl on a bus of them, full of men looking for work throughout Portugal and Spain. And I'm just exploring, right? Um, I would never, if I had to talk to myself back then, I'd probably warn myself never to not do that. But hey, you know, I just did it. So I'm not risk averse, um, Rusty. But I will say that Starting this company, DDC Consulting, is a risk for me. Um, and I know that it comes with challenges and I just face it straight on. Well, Donald, and knowing you, I could do an entire TV show on you uh, sharing about the risks you've taken, but that's what got you to this point where you're successful and you're helping so many people with their goals. And, and I wanna ask you one more thing before we wrap Donalyn. What's, a, what's an important lesson you learned in life so far? Gosh, so many. Um, but there was one thing that was in your book again that made me think about a quote that I, I use. And this was, there, for those who haven't read the book, you read it, you'll find it. But I'll leave you my quote, which is, um, you can pray to God, but you got to row to shore. You know, you got to put the work in. Um, but on the other hand, you also have to have faith and hope um, and believe that you're going to make it, believe in yourself. The other thing too is just to listen, listen to your na'al, listen to that instinct that tells you, go for it. There's going to be that fear, um, but you just go, keep going, go for it. Well, Donalyn, I really enjoyed having you on the show today. I mean, you are such a highly respected person. You, you, you're so positive and you have so much experiences that Everyone just absolutely loves you. So I just want to thank you for really oh. being on the show and providing those insights today. And I like to think it's that aloha spirit, right? You give it back, every, everything. You take it and you give it back as much as you can. And everyone should do that. So thank you and aloha to you, Rusty. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Donalyn. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Donalyn and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.